Welcome to the first episode of the Book Bay. My name is Graham Kalimi K. Whew, I'm excited. Okay, cool. Now here's the thing. For the first episode, guys, I was torn between reviewing this book, right? And reviewing this book right here. And you know these books. But with a little bit of thinking, it hit me that there's most probably no better South African story to review for the first episode. First episode. That can't tempt. That suit! Can you see that? Can you see that? Two piece! Well, I like to think of it as three piece. Anyway, this year marks 50 years since the death of Ken Tam. And the suit was published in 1963 for an African literary journal called The Classic, which is the reason why you're seeing me holding an anthology of short stories. It is a short story, guys. For those who don't know, for those who don't know. Now, let's hit the ground running. So now here's the thing, I'm going to start by reading the book now as opposed to doing so later because the opening scene guys is lyrical and stylistically beautiful. It is three dimensional, hmm? it provides us with details of space, time and action, meaning that the book speaks for itself, huh? for itself. Let's read. 5.30 in the morning and the candlewick bedspread frowned as the man under it stirred. He did not like to wake his wife flying by his side as yet, so he crawled up and out by careful peristalsis. But before he tiptoed out of his room with shoes and socks under his arm, he leaned over and peered at the sleeping serenity of his wife. To him, a daily morning miracle. He grinned and yawned simultaneously, offering his wordless tedium to whatever gods for the goodness of life, for the pure beauty of his wife, for the strength surging through his willing body, for even unperturbed rhythms of his passage through days and months and years it must be to heaven how beautiful is that how pretty was that number one we've discovered that there's a man and a woman number two we've discovered that the man doesn't like to wake his wife in the morning so he crawls out of bed and tiptoes out of the bedroom now number three we've discovered that the man prays on a daily basis for the pure beauty of his wife and this man thinks that she is a daily morning miracle yeah? how beautiful is that but leading further, guys, you'll discover that the man's name is Philemon and the woman's name is Matilda. He likes to call her Tilly. And on this particular day, Philemon waited and watched as Matilda eat her breakfast away. Matilda was like, And now, babe? Philemon responded, No, my loving. See, I'm just waiting for you to finish your breakfast. So what could happen? So I can go and wash the dishes. Before going to work. Before going to work, guys. Now, there's nothing wrong in a man washing dishes, but there's definitely something wrong in a man washing dishes for a township manager, for someone who's going to stay here. I'm in Philemon. I'm in. So Philemon catches a bus to work and runs into an old loud mouth called Mapiquet. Mapiquet are like an old G. Reluctantly tells him, son, eh, look here, son. For these last three months, eh, you know, eh, there's a young man there eh, that, that has been there, eh, you know, eh, <clears throat> visiting your wife yeah you know uh, uh, I, I didn't want to tell you this but my wife is nagging me to tell you this thing so Philman becomes devastated and takes a bus back to Savaya town where he lives when he gets to his house he finds his wife in bed speaking bedroom tongues with another man huh but Philman doesn't address the situation no no not not Philmon see not Philmon Philmon instead heads straight into the wardrobe and says fancy Tilly I forgot my passport if it wasn't for that old man, I probably would have been then tushu tushu kushu. Philemon spots a man in a white vest and Andes jump out of the window. Andes. <laughs> now I can tell you by that one item of clothing that Philemon got there right on time. That particular day anyway. But this is where the story changes because when Philemon looks at a chair, lo and behold. There's a soup, an entire three piece. Huh? I see we've got a visitor, he says. I would like him to be treated with the greatest consideration. He will eat with us. He will sleep with us. If he vanishes or anything happens to him, Tilly, I will kill you. So as the couple had dinner that evening, the soup was placed on a chair and served like a human being. This became a routine. 
and as time progressed, till he noted that her punishment was not that severe. Until Philemon switched things up. So Philemon laid down the law that during the week, the suit should be taken to dry cleaners so that on Sunday it may be taken for a walk. Note, both he and Tilly must dress up for the occasion. So when Sunday came, Philemon took a walk with Tilly, greeted friends, greeted enemies, greeted strangers, greeted my banners, greeted everyone. All the while, Tilly ashamedly carried a cross. The suit. In trying to find absolution for her conscience, Matilda joined a cultural club for women where she kept busy. One day she organized a party for her friends from the club, then Philemon made her feet the suit right in front of the people. This is when Matilda decided enough is enough. She ended her contract with life. Boom! That's the story. That right there is the story. Now the story may be about a woman cheating on a doting husband. And the answer it doesn't provide is to the question, why? And the why, the question why, is not easy to explore because we only get to see Matilda through Philemon's eyes. But Ken Temba drops subliminal clues about the state of Philemon's mind. From the beginning of the story, Philemon is self-absorbed and abnormal. Now, I've never heard of a husband who crawls out of bed at 5.30 in the morning. Now, I don't know about men in other countries, but a South African will wake you up and get his 30 seconds. I've never heard of a husband who tiptoes out of his bedroom because he doesn't want to wake up his wife. An entire breadwinner. For who, for what? I've never heard of a man who finds his wife in bed with another and act like he doesn't see it. Instead, Philemon uses the suit to emotionally punish Matilda. Since Matilda allowed another man in the sanctity of their bedroom, the suit represents the man she cheated with, her sin or guilt. In other words, since you've allowed this sin to be part of our lives, let's have it in the open. Cater to him in front of me. Feed him in front of me. Let's sleep with him right in front of me. It is interesting to see that Matilda is not threatened for cheating. As a matter of fact, the cheating saga is not even touched once after it happened. The only thing that Matilda is threatened for is if the suit goes missing. Now this becomes evident that Matilda is going to spend the rest of her life wallowing in the shame of her guilt. This becomes obvious when she's made to feed the suit in front of a guest. Now for me, I'm going to give the story 8 out of 10. Because apart from the fact that it's a story one of a kind, Ken Timber really goes down to detail in terms of description. I mean, he's even specific about black skin tone. Chestnut, guys. Not, not a coffee color, a yellow bone. No. Chestnut. Hmm? Hazelnut. Hmm? Nutmeg. Hmm? What else is there? Ebon. Yes, yes, man. Another thing that I like is that these characters are from Sophia Town, yet they are normal people. Like they don't speak English with a mixture of vernacular and, and Afrikaans. Like how some writers and filmmakers try to portray everyone from Sophia Town as a homogenous group who behave in a particular way. Like they all like jazz music. Like they're all, you know, on some edge of a style may like. You know, just normal people. If you haven't read the story, please read it. But if you have read it and have something to say, write it down in the comment section below. My name is Graham Kelly McKay. Thank you for watching the book bag. Don't forget to subscribe.